Hi, this is Andy in the Red Hat Kernel Storage Group. This is the first of three screencasts on configuring the Linux kernel target with Target CLI. It will focus on some background and the basics of Target CLI. The second screencast will focus on configuring the iSCSI fabric, and the last will dive a little deeper into configuration file formats and programmatic access. Target CLI is in recent Fedora releases, as well as Debian Unstable and Ubuntu. So whatever your distro, you can take it for a spin. I hope you'll excuse my rough voice for this, I have a bit of a cold. Okay, so before we get started, let's talk a little bit about the kernel target in general. This subsystem lets a general purpose computer provide block storage to another machine, which the other machine can then format just like a regular disk and use. The actual disk block requests go to and from the first machine instead of to the local hard drive. While this is usually over a network, this is very different from network file systems like Samba or NFS. You might use NFS to share work files among machines in a workroom, but this is usually in addition to each machine's local disk that it boot off of and where its operating system's files are stored. Block storage operates at a lower level, under the file system. Since a network block device behaves like a local block device, we can install the operating system to it and boot just like it were a regular disk. This is really useful when dealing with machines that don't have any local storage, like virtual machines. VMs can, of course, use, make use of the, the local storage on the host they're running on, but if we centralize the storage for all our VMs in one place, that gives us the flexibility to run that VM on any host that can access the central storage, and we can even migrate VMs to different hosts as needed. Pretty convenient. So that's why we're doing all this. Let's talk about LIO. We've had iSCSI targets in Linux for a long time. The most obvious thing about what's new about the kernel target subsystem, LIO, is that it's in the kernel. This should mean that we get better performance. Also, LIO is a multi-protocol target, so it can support other transports besides iSCSI, like fiber channel, fiber channel over ethernet, and even USB and firewire. All of these use SCSI commands, so we can have a SCSI handling core shared among all of these and a fabric module for each to handle their specific differences. LAO is configured via a virtual file system called configfs, which is handy but still not something the sysadmin wants to have to deal with every day. Rising Tide Systems, the original author of LAO, also wrote Target CLI, a friendly command line interface. Today, I'm demonstrating an enhanced version of Target CLI. Let's take a look. First, we see backstores with various kinds of backstore in purple. This is where we tell I LIO about the volumes on this machine that we will be exporting to other machines. First, we have block devices. Any local block device, uh, if it's through LVM, if it's encrypted, whatever, can be shared. We can also share regular files on our local file system as disk images, and that's what the file IO backstore is for. This can be handy but the performance will not quite be up to the block backstore. PSCSI backstore is for SCSI pass-through. If, if you already have a local SCSI storage device, you can just export it directly, and LAO will pass all SCSI commands down to it. Finally, RAMDisk lets you create RAM disks, small, temporary RAM back devices, which are good for testing. Now, the shell interface is quite nice. We have help on available commands, we have ls, we can change directory via this mechanism. We can change directory by saying cd the place we want to change to. And we can also change directory just by saying the place we want to go, and it'll go there. And so this gives us a cut down view of the overall configuration tree. Uh, so this is a little different than the way that you normally configure services under Linux. Usually you have a config file in Etsy somewhere and you make changes to the config file and then you add it, you reload the daemon and then either it works or it doesn't and you have to go look in var log something to, to, to get messages and that sort of thing. So this is this is different. This You set it up using this and then you can save your configuration and reload the configuration later but this is this is 
this is how you generate that. So let's let's take a look at uh, at uh, uh, creating some backstores here. First, we'll create a block backstore. So I'm going to do whoops, create, and so if with the help if, if I'm in the black backstores block directory, I could tab complete, and that gives me a list of all the commands at that level. You have different commands available at different levels of the configuration tree. So when I say create here, it knows that I'm creating a block backstore as, to, as opposed to creating, calling create in a different place where it might do something different. So here we're going to create, and we have two parameters. It wants us to give it a name and a dev. So we'll say block one. And the dev will be dev vdb1. I'm in a virtual machine here, if you hadn't guessed. So that'll create that. And if we do ls, we can see that we have registered that, uh, that block device with lio. So file io is kind of the same way. So I'm going to cd into backstores file io, create. So this has similar parameters. We're going to give the name, which is file io one, pretty unoriginal, and we will say foo image. Now foo image exists. So this is going to be. It's going to look at the size of foo image and create it based on that. In addition to using existing files, we can also create files here and add them. So, but then of course it's not going to know what size it is. So let's give it a size. Oops, I used the same name. There we go. So, Finally, let's just create RAM disk, uh, and let's just make it one meg. Okay, so if we go back to the top and do an ls, you can see that we have created a block device, two file I/O devices, and a RAM disk. Unfortunately, since this is a virtual machine, I don't have any physical SCSI devices available, so I can't show you that, but it's very similar to the block device. So that's it for this part, and I'll see you in part two.